So my name is Janet Gemmel with Cape Fair Family Law and today I'm going to talk to you about an action that is only in court in North Carolina. It's called divorce from bed and board. So you can find this in the North Carolina General Statutes at chapter 50 section 7. So 50-7 and it's called divorce from bed and board. You're probably wondering what the heck is divorce from bed and board. I'm going to tell you about it. It is not the same thing as an absolute divorce. An absolute divorce is sort of what everybody in North Carolina knows a divorce is. That's the separation from your spouse, and then you can file for the cut of the marriage one year and one day. We already talked about that in the last video. But no, this is divorce from bed and board. You can file this while you're still married. You can only file this with the court. You have to do it in a verified pleading or in a complaint. And you have to include a number of things in that complaint. You have to include your names, when you were married, and what's going on? Why are you entitled to a divorce from bed and board? So it sounds like an old English type of action, and it is. What you're really asking the court to do is grant you a legal separation. Now wait a minute, Janet. You told us in the last video that we're legally separated the date we stopped living together, one of us intends it to be permanent. That's true. But sometimes when you're living with your spouse, or even if you're physically separated, you still want the court to grant you a legal separation, and this is how you do it. Now the statute, 50-7, tells us the things that we must prove. You must prove that you're married, that one of you has been a resident of North Carolina for at least six months prior to filing. You must include the names and dates of birth of any of your children. Now I like to include children, even if they're stepchildren. Um, I like to put everything in my complaints, okay? Well, you have to show that you're an injured party because your spouse has committed one of the following faults. Number one, that they've abandoned you or abandonment. You have to show also that your spouse left without reason or justification, that you did nothing wrong to make them leave. So abandonment. The second thing that you can show is that somebody's turned you maliciously out of doors. So that they forced you to leave your home, for example, domestic violence. You could have somebody has changed the locks while you were out. They've maliciously turned you out of doors. Or that maybe they caused you to be evicted from an apartment complex or forced you to move out of a home that's yours. So they maliciously turned you out of doors. That's a second option. The third thing that you can show is cruel and barbarous treatment that endangers the life of another. So cruel and barbarous treatment that endangered your life or the life of another. Usually that's domestic violence. And a lot of times we may see a complaint for divorce from bed and board around the same time that we see a complaint for domestic violence, but they are different. They cannot be filed together, okay? Through generally different courtrooms hear those things. Sometimes they'll hear them together. So the fourth thing that you can show is indignities that rendered your life burdensome and your condition intolerable. What does that mean? It was just, it was so hard to live under the circumstances, those indignities, things that were just horrible. Again, you, the courts have come out and said that this behavior must be seriously annoying at least. It's kind of interesting wording. And that it must be continuous or repeated. So it can't just be one thing. Um, the courts have sort of said we need to give a little bit more sort of humility. But in divorce from bed and board, it must be serious indignities that have been continuous or repeated and they made your life burdensome, your condition intolerable. It was really, you could not live like that. Okay, that was the fourth thing. The fifth thing that you can show is if someone's an excessive user of drugs or alcohol, it sort of kind of speaks for itself. Um, some people have asked me, what about marijuana? Because marijuana is legal in Colorado. Well, it's not legal here in North Carolina, not at the moment. We don't even have legal medicinal use of marijuana at the moment. So even if somebody is a habitual user of marijuana, that's still an excessive user of drugs and alcohol. The sixth one is sort of the one that everybody knows, and that's if someone's committed adultery. Adultery, Janet, what is that? Everybody knows that's cheating. That is when you can prove that someone is cheating. Well, how do I prove that? Do I have to have videos of the act actually happening? No, 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 no. 
What you need to be able to prove is time and inclination. That the person had time to participate in the act and that they had the inclination to do it. And I like to say you've seen movies before and you've seen the characters go behind a door and close it and you start to hear the music in your head and you know what's going on. Okay? That's adultery. If we can make someone, a judge, a jury, think that is happening, then you've got adultery. So those are the six injuries that can happen to you that would allow you to file a divorce from bed and board. A couple of things about your complaint that have to be there. Remember your complaint's a written document that you file with the court. You have to have a summons and some other things, which we'll probably talk about in a different video. But in this complaint, it must be verified. Okay, that means you've signed off on the truth and validity of your complaint and that it's been in front of a notary. And there's a set form for that that we use in North Carolina. In addition to the things that we already said, is that you must plead with particularity. You actually have to list out the things that have happened. That can be a little embarrassing since this is a public record, but you must list with those things with particularity or plead with particularity. Okay, so you have to list the things, the injuries that you've had caused to you. For example, I love to give this example. Um, it's something that happened very early in my career. I once had a fellow come in and retain me for domestic violence, to defend him in a domestic violence case. And he told me repeatedly, Janet, I did not do it. I did not threaten my wife. I didn't touch her. I didn't do anything. He, of course, he didn't have the domestic violence complaint when he retained me, but I told him I'd get it from the courthouse. And the hearing was the next day. So I showed up at court the next day and he had his complaint with him. I also got a copy and I looked at it and he had literally said in there that I'm going to stomp a mud hole in your ass and stomp it dry. And although that is not something that you can technically do to somebody, it was pretty clear that he had threatened to kick her in her butt. And so the court found that he had been guilty of domestic violence. So as an example, when you're pleading in your complaint, you must list specifically the things that were done. In that case, that's probably an indignity that rendered your life intolerable. Wait a minute, Janet, you told me it had to be repeated. Well, in her complaint, she also put that he had said stuff like that before. Okay, So just you have to list very specifically what has been going on and what's going to be going on. Now, the conduct from your spouse, the misconduct, must be unprovoked. You can't have caused it, okay? You can't have pressured your spouse to do it. Now, if you've acted knowing this is your spouse's button, and if I push it, I know how they're going to react. You can't have committed conduct that you know will unreasonably make the other person act in the way you're anticipating. Okay? You can't do that. You can't provoke them. Unprovoked. Now, the other interesting thing about a divorce from bed and board is that you have to do it when the actions are happening. You can't have an unreasonable delay. Adultery. Five years ago, unreasonable delay. Domestic violence two years ago. Unreasonable delay to file it now. Alcohol abuse six months ago. Probably an unreasonable delay to file it now. Let's say those things are still happening now. Or they happened. Adultery happened five years ago. Started happening again. Now you can bring it up. And you can use those prior acts in your complaint to talk about the current ones to show it's a pattern. It's something that's repeated or continuous. You can absolutely do that. In North Carolina, we have what we call affirmative defenses. Those are things that when the other side is answering, when they say, yeah, I've read your complaint, but I'm going to answer and I'm going to claim an affirmative defense that you've done something that makes your claims nullified. And in North Carolina, we have a, an affirmative defense of condemnation and condemnation can be used as a affirmative defense against divorce from bed and board. Because when I'm explaining to my clients what condemnation is, I use the word forgiveness. But it's not mere forgiveness. It's forgiveness with action. It's forgiveness with time, okay? It's forgiveness, according to the case law, on the condition that that behavior does not happen again. So it's not mere forgiveness. It's forgiveness on a condition that the behavior doesn't happen again. If the, if the behavior happens again. So my spouse cheats on me five years ago and I forgive them. I've condoned that behavior. They've told me it's not going to happen again. I've forgiven them, believing that it will never happen again. And they do it again. A month ago, they started cheating again and I found out. Well, now they might say, well, you forgave that act five years ago. And I say, I sure did. But you recriminated. You did it again after I condoned it. So 
two different affirmative defenses there. One is condemnation and one is recrimination. So if I make a complaint and I say my spouse injured me, they were horrible, and they come back and they say, you forgave all those things, you condone that behavior, I might be able to then say in my reply to their answer, well, you recriminated, you did it all again. Okay, so those are some affirmative defenses that can be used in divorce from bed and board claims.